Hello everybody, it's Farm Sim Guy here. Hope you're all doing well today. I thought we'd have a look at how you can set up yourself your own multiplayer server using third-party mods or maps. So what we're going to do, we are going to jump straight into it now. I am in the game at the moment and I have in my career section here, I have a save game, a brand new game with the North Dakota Hastings 8km map on. And we're going to come back to that in a little minute, but... Uh, I'm going to show you a few tips and a few ways of helping yourself get set up for a multiplayer game without having to spend all the time on the server doing which can slow you down. So I'll show you a few tips that I've picked up along the way as I've done these servers in the past and hopefully pass them on to you. But first and foremost, let's jump in and talk a little bit about multiplayer servers. So you have a load of options available to you. I personally uh, am an affiliate for game servers. Uh, I rate them. The, they've never let me down. I've also used Nitrido in the past. Um, and again, I'm running a Nitrido server at the moment. And it's running really, really well on FS22. So um, I would say shop around. Find the one that works for you the best. Again, you can pick your location anywhere in the world as well. So you can... Uh, adapt and tweak it to how you see fit but what we'll do we'll log into here i already have my server bought um so if i jump into here uh, you can see down here all these interfaces are slightly different um but if you see down here we have a 12 player farming simulator 22 uh, server and i put a note behind that saying north dakota um, now you want to click on info here now any of the hosting platforms that you choose to use will all give you a web admin um, so if I jump into here, this is what Farming Simulator provides for them. It's a web interface for managing your server online. Um, so like I said, the, the way you set up your server, depending on which provider you choose, will be slightly different. But ultimately, when you get to this point, uh, the interface and the way you set up servers is the same no matter who you use. So what we'll do is we will log into our dedicated server here. Uh, they will provide the information to you in an email when you set your server up and here is our server So here you can change the name of your server. Let's call this North Dakota FSG um, You can put your admin password in you can put your game password in there. I'll leave those as password for now I'll change those before I uh, uh, Release this video just in case we get uh, some uh, rogue visitors coming in but um, what you've got here is uh, save game options, as you would in the normal game. Uh, and as you can see, the first one there, Elm Creek money at zero. So the base game maps, the base game mods, and any mods that are in the mod hub are already installed onto the server when you arrive. So if you want to just play with the base game or add any uh, mods in from the mod hub, you can do that very, very easily. But we're going to look at how you add third-party mods in and use those as well. So for now... Um, Everything else in here you can change to uh, uh, your heart's content. Um, you can change the language. You can change the save interval time. I tend to leave this at around about 15 minutes. It helps not lose too much uh, of the game if there's any issues with it. Um, you can have cross-play allowed if you want. I'm going to uncheck this. This is going to be a PC-only server, but we're going to hit the save button there now. Now, that doesn't mean the server is live. Uh, the server is still offline as it shows in the top corner here but we have got underneath here um, active mods and activated mods so as you can see there there's the saddle uh, track pack uh, which is sitting there as an active mod but we haven't activated i could tick that and activate it and it would be then in this game save which would that that would then mean that anybody playing on the server would need to have that installed i'm not going to do that because not everybody has that uh, but if we do jump over to mods very, very quickly here, you can see uh, what's available. So things like uh, SID modding and JHHG's combines that were released just at Christmas there, they've been added here. So you can add those to the server if you want to. So for example, uh, SID's combine, I can click that button there um, and it will add it to the server. And you can see it downloading just now. Now, if I go back to the home screen, and scroll down to here you can see now the John Deere X9 has been added so I can then click on that activate that and that would push that mod onto the server that save game and you would be required if you were on that save game to make sure that you had the John Deere X9 installed uh, so let's just deactivate that again because what we're going to do is um, upload our own mods um, and what you do is you go back to the mods page at the top there. So one, two, third one along there, mods. 
and you scroll down to the bottom of all of the installed mods in the game, so all the mod hub are mods, and here you've got the option here to upload mods. So we're going to do that. Now, jumping back to the game for a little minute, what I've done here is I've set up a single player game and I'm using what is now known as uh, SGA Tools, which is in essence uh, PV Tools from FS19. And if you haven't used this, this is a brilliant way of managing multiple folders full of mods and particularly important when it comes to multiplayer servers because you are running a very specific set of mods on a multiplayer server which might not match up with what you have in your main mods folder. So it's always, I would recommend always keeping them in separate folders if you can. Now, SGA mod folder switcher is exactly the same as PV tools, um, and I did do a video on this for FS19, so check that out if you want to know how this works. But uh, this works, uh, SGA is working very nicely for FS22 already. I will put a link in the description so you can go and get it, um, but definitely worth something uh, looking at if you're going to be doing a lot of a multiplayer server gameplay. Um, so, um, like I said, I have set up a gameplay with the specific mods that I want on my server. So there they are. I'm keeping it relatively small to start with, 22 different uh, mods, uh, including the map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload those now to my server. So back into our server interface here, we just click on choose files and within our folder North Dakota here that we've created, I select all 22, I hit the open button, uh, the maximum allowed upload size is 1.71 gigabytes. Now I believe I am underneath that, uh, I'm just going to check, um, the biggest thing I have is the map at 354 meg, um, it maybe tots up to a bit, let's just have a look. 703 megabytes in total so we're well under the 1.71 maximum so i can comfortably hit the upload button and now the little spinny dial there sits and ticks away um and when it's ready we'll come back okay once those have uploaded you will see a list like this with big red crosses next to it. And what you'll see as well is any that are highlighted with any potential errors in them. So issues, very minor these, uh, you tend to see this on the odd mod and it's probably nothing game breaking uh, that tells you what's what. It actually, if you mouse over them, it tells you what it is. So just a few texture files there, nothing, nothing drastic at all. But it does give the opportunity then to remove any mods that you think maybe are gonna cause issues on the multiplayer server. Personally, I'm happy with what's there. Now, uh, the servers do offer you quite a lot of space. I mean, four gigabytes in total uh, by default on game servers. They will up that to eight gigabytes uh, if you drop them a note as well. Uh, Nitrado give you um, a whopping 25 gigabytes of storage. And I have to say, in all my time, I've actually never gone over the four gigabytes of storage uh, on any of my multiplayer servers. And that's been running quite substantial ones as well with um, a, a large group of people and a large uh, number of mods. So there you go. Uh, one word of advice for me as well is start small on the mods you upload. Just do the basics. You can add to these at any point. So it makes sense to just do a little bit at a time rather than uh, trying to upload 200 mods in one go because you will ultimately end up causing yourself uh, more hassle as well. So add them in but by bit. The important one to add in, I guess, is the map because that's the one that you're going to be starting to set up your game on. So once these are in, uh, you need to activate these because at the moment... They are just sitting as uploaded mods in your server. So what you do is you go back to your home screen here. And if you scroll down to activate mods, as we had before, you can see now the list of mods that are available. Now we know that these are all the ones that we wanted to install. So we're going to click all here. But ultimately, if you had some in there that you wanted to deactivate that you didn't want to use anymore, or just the odd one that you wanted to add in, you could just select them individually. And we're just going to hit the activate button. Uh, so there, they have now moved to active mods, and if you scroll down underneath there, um, you can see activate mods has currently no inactive mods. So again, if you went back in the future and added another mod in, it would appear down here until you activated it. So there we go. We have now got a server with our specific mods in it, and what we want to do now is we want to go to here, we want to pick a save game, an empty save game. So there we go, we've got an empty save game here. At the moment, it's prompting us to use the map Elm Creek, but we're not going to do that. And if you scroll down here, you can see North Dakota Hastings 8 kilometer is now an option for the map. So what we'll do, we'll take that 
um, and we will hit the save button and now we know if we log into our server that it will start with the North Dakota Hastings map available to us. So there we go, we have a save game. Now what we could do if we wanted to do here is we could start the server up uh, and you can see now it's running, gives you all the information that you need here. Uh, we can then go back into the game here. We'll go back to here. We will go into multiplayer and join game. So we'll quickly do FSG here and North Dakota FSG and you can see there there is no red alert box which tells us that the mods that we have in our uh, mod folder are in line with the mods that are required to run that server. So we'll hit the start button here. Uh, I will put in the password which currently is password but like I said I will change that before this video goes live. This is purely at the moment just a quick test to make sure the server's working and the map is loading up. So um, as soon as this is ready uh, we'll just have a little check and then we will jump back out of the game. So there we go we're at a hundred percent there so we'll just hit the start button and confirm our player and there we are we are in the North Dakota map. Everything is running well but it is in essence an empty map still. If we just jump up to here we've got everything that we need it's loading the fields in now so now we know everything's working and the map works, we are going to jump out and get the next stage ready. Okay, so before we jump back into the game, what we need to do, these are the mods that we have installed on the server. I have these in a separate folder. So what I've done is I have set up a separate folder link here in SGA. Uh, so I'm going to click on that so I know exactly the mods on the server are exactly the same as the ones I have in my folder here. So what we'll do, now we've done that, we can restart the game uh, and it will link to this mod folder only with these mods in and quickly i'll use this juncture as well to show you how you can share those mods that you've uploaded to your server with anybody else you want to play in your server as well and if you go into settings here uh, and if you scroll down to public mod download if you activate that if you scroll down to the bottom now you have a link to active mods uh, and if you click on this you can obviously copy this and share this but if you click on this you can see there is the mods that we set up on the server and you can share those with whoever you like to download and uh, take. They can use them individually by clicking on the little disk there or they can click on the box at the bottom which will download all of them. So that is going into the settings section here and going down to the bottom to public mod download and activating it there. Okay, so we are back in the game now. We are going to jump into single player mode, into career mode. Okay, and you can see here that we've selected that specific folder in SGA because some of our other game saves aren't showing up here. So uh, game save one here. We know this is the one that we want to jump into. Game save one. You can see there is our mods that we had installed, only the ones that we wanted. Um, so I can click start now, which will take us into a single player game. Now, why am I setting this up in a single player game? Well, uh, there's two reasons, really. Uh, certainly when it comes to landscaping and, and sorting ground out, uh, there is a lot of lag uh, when you do that on a server. Obviously, it's passing a lot of information to and from your computer to the server with commands. So it's a lot easier to do it in single player mode. And the other benefit is I have installed store deliveries as a mod. Now, if you set the location of store deliveries in a single player uh, game, and then we upload that game save to the server at the end, it will remember that location for store deliveries, which means that you can get anything delivered directly to your farm uh, on your multiplayer map rather than getting it delivered to the shop and having to drive it all the way to your farm which could be on the other side of the map so let's jump in there we go uh, i'm going to ignore the auto drive thing for now uh, but here we are we are on the map so um what we're going to do now we are going to jump in and we're going to do a big setup uh, because i've got a location where i want my uh, farm to be for our multiplayer server um so if you bear with us uh, we will be back in a little while Bye. 
there we have it. The game is set up in single player mode with everything that we want to start our multiplayer game with. Obviously you can do as much or as little as you want. We've set our money as well to a cool 1 million of spendable cash when the guys get into the game, but at the moment uh, they will have a lot of combining to do, so we'll leave them to do that. Um, so, next step is to jump out of the game and upload this single player game save and turn it into a multiplayer. So back within My Games and Farming Simulator 22, you will see you have got your save game folders here. We've got six save games at the moment, but we know the one we want to use is save game one. Now, if you look inside save game one, you'll see all of the things that you need to create a new save game. Uh, so what we want to do here, this will record all the stuff that we've, so all those combines that we set up, that, that changes to the uh, ground, the placement of those sheds, all of that stuff that we did in the single player game is held within these files. Now what you want to do is zip up all of these files, not this folder here at save game one level, you need to go within the folder. So you want to select all your files, right click, add to archive, obviously I'm using WinRAR, so if you're using something else like 7-zip, you'll know the way to do this. Make sure it's a zip folder, hit the OK button, you'll see that compressing. Now within this folder now, you'll have a zip called Save Game 1. Now I'm going to move that out of there to my desktop, um, and then it's out of the Game Save folder, which won't cause any issues, and then we'll jump back over to the server. So here we are, back in the server interface. Now what we need to do first and foremost, because the server is running, as you can see there, I'm going to hit the stop button to turn the server off. Now we are in save game slot 2, save game 2, North Dakota. Uh, I'm going to go to the second navigation item along here, save games. Now you can see here slot is not that one, it is my game save 2. And what we're going to do here uh, is we're going to choose the file that we want. We're going to go to desktop, which is where we already are, and there is save game 1 that we just copied to the desktop. We'll hit open and we'll hit upload. Now as you can see in the top there, we have a million pound, which is what we set in the game, and we've played an hour and 15 minutes, all done single player, but now that's copied over to be a multiplayer game save. Now all we need to do is go back to home, uh, check again that we're still on save game two, there we go, North Dakota, money one million, so we know that's there. So what we'll do now, is we'll restart the server and we'll jump in and make sure that all those changes that we did in the single player have now been copied over to the multiplayer server. Okay, here we are. Server list, North Dakota FSG. Let's hit the start button. It will have remembered our password from last time. Okay, let's hit the start button. Now we are still spawning here. What I need to do is unpurchase this land. Uh, but what we do, we'll jump into here. I better jump into a farm now. So there we go. We're on a farm. And look what we have here. This looks very much like, if I enter this vehicle, everything that we set up on our single player server is sitting here ready to go, which is very exciting. So if I run around the back of here as well, I just want to prove the other point that I mentioned earlier on. If I want to purchase something like a truck, we can buy it and get it delivered directly to our farm and there it is so there you go it's a lot quicker i've found it a lot quicker to do it this way setting everything up in single play you just don't have the delays and the waiting for uh, the server to respond and things like that so uh, from my perspective a very very quick and easy way of helping you get your multiplayer service set up and once you're in game like this um it's all systems go. Now, of course, as well, if you want to make fundamental changes, you can always download this multiplayer save game as well at any point. Take it back into single player, make the changes you want, and then re-upload it as well. So it's not just a one-off thing at the start of a game. You can do it whenever you like. But uh, for now, there you go. Hopefully that was very, very helpful. Um, certainly it's something that uh, I've learned over the years and I felt it was worth sharing on with you guys because it certainly sped up the process that I use for setting up servers and I obviously do this a fair little bit for the community. So uh, from me, for now, thank you very, very much for watching as always and I will see you all again very soon. Bye for now.